May the peace of the Lord and Savior Jesus be with all of us. And this 20 Sunday after Pentecost, the church is kind of empty this morning. We have a few helpers. But uh, I know a lot of people are connected with us. Most of the people at St. Paul are connected through Facebook or in the radio. If you don't know, we had a couple of cases of COVID-19 in our congregation, so we had to uh, uh, have only online services for the next few weekends. So today and next Sunday, we are not, we are not having services. Uh, we're going to have services, but with the Lord's law. But we welcome you to our service as you are on radio or you are on Facebook. Blessings for you as you worship with us. Today we will talk about the hope, the hope that our Lord and Savior Jesus gives to all of us. And we will start the service asking God's presence. We start today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins unto God our Father. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. The Son is known only to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver me, O Lord, according to your mercy and steadfast love, and restore me that I may rest in your peace. Amen. The congregation, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and given to us his only Son to suffer and die for our salvation. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May he who begun this good work in you bring it to the completion in the day of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may be left and govern our hearts in all things that we persevere with the steadfast faith and the compassion of your name. Jesus Christ, your Son, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now the first, uh, the first reading is the Psalm, the Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, where, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your food be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord, the Lord will keep, keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. Amen. Let's uh, let's hear the my helper. He may be seated. He may be seated now for the reading. We uh, we're gonna hear the first reading. The reading of the Old Testament and. As we don't have any readers, I'm going to read from here. But before, I need to welcome them. I want to again welcome the KRLL listeners to our service this morning. The church is empty, but our hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
and uh, we are praising the Lord and Savior. And today we are all the reading, the, the Old Testament reading, the Epistle reading, and also the Gospels, not so much the Gospel, but the rest of the readings, they all talk about hope. And uh, the first reading comes from Isaiah, the prophet, verse, uh, chapter 45, verses 1 to 7, where we read the prophet saying, This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open the Lord before him so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you, and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut to bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches, the sword, and secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor to you. Do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from there, apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. So that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord. And there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Paul, Silas, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. If we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father that your word produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we live among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the Holy Gospel, it will be according, it is according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 15. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him, trap him and his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they say, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is their opinion? It is right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not. But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used to pay taxes. 
They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our faith in the first article of the Catechism. The first article of the Apostles' Creed tells us about the creative work and continuing care of God the Father. The explanation written by Martin, Martin Luther further explained the work of God the Father and our faithful response. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I, I believe that God has made me in all creatures, that He has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, all my members, my reason and all my senses, and He still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, home wife and children, land and animals, and all I have. He frees me and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy. Without any merit or words in me, for all this is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Amen. Let's sing the next, the next song, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
and I'm uh, kind of down over here, so I get told that today's agenda is recording, and uh, we were just a little concerned about the sound, so I'm closer to the microphone. I want everybody to be able to listen to the sermon. Uh, the sermon is based in First Thessalonians chapter chapter one, where the apostle Paul tells us words of hope. Uh, if you have your online bulletin or if you have the Bible at home, you can uh, remember the, 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 the reading, especially, uh, I want to emphasize in verse 3. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. In our Lord Jesus Christ. Endurance inspired by hope. About three years ago, I was diagnosed with um, diverticulitis. Diverticulitis. Most of you might not know what it is, but it is a problem that happens in your large intestine. A lot of people suffer with that, but not. Everyone has to have surgery. So I had to have a surgery, hoping that my problem would just go away. Well, at first I at first I treated with medicine. And I thought, well, maybe if I just uh, do some diet and drink all the medicine, I will be just fine. I was hoping for that, but it didn't happen. One year later, after spine filling and having um, many uh, episodes of diverticulitis, I saw a specialist and he said, the best hope for you is to have a surgery. And he said, well, the surgery, hopefully, is going to be laparoscopic. Not a big cut in my stomach as I had. So I was hoping that the surgery would go well and I would have the laparoscopic surgery, which didn't happen. I had to have two surgeries because of that. I could continue going on and on with my story about my surgery, but if you notice, as I am telling you about my surgery and all the things that happened before, I use the, the word hope about four or five times. I was hoping, I hope, and this is one of the words that we use on our daily basis because we all have hope for something. We right now have hope that we hope that COVID-19 is go away so we can go back to our kind of normal life. Someone said it's never going to be normal again. But we believe that it kind of can be normal. At least we can get together. We hope that this next two Sundays will go fast so we can get together in church again. So we are always hoping for something, which is not, which is not the hope that the Apostle Paul describes in First Thessalonians chapter one. The hope that the Apostle Paul is describing, it is completely different than this one that I have on my surgery, the ones we have on our daily lives. We give thanks to God, he says, always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, remember without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. The hope that the Apostle Paul tells us about is the hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, which is completely different than the earthly hopes we have. In the scripture itself, the Bible itself, uses the word hope at least 200 times, at least 200. The hope in Jesus Christ is mentioned 200 times at least in the Bible. 
It must be important. And it is. The hope in the Bible is not the same word hope in our, as I said, in our modern um, vocabulary or modern dictionary. When we use the word hope, we always want to we always want to extern, we always want to tell about our wants, desires, our dreams. We hope that to reign, we hope that a lot of things will happen, but as Christians, what does it mean to have hope? What it means to have hope when we are in Christ? Once a pastor of mine, uh, a friend of mine, a pastor says, hope is faith in the future tense. When faith looks to the future, it's called hope. And what about us as Christians to live without the hope that one day we will be reunited with our Creator, with God and Jesus? Hope for us Christians is the assurance, the certainty that one day we will be in paradise with Christ. Hope for us it is that we one day will have our sins completely forgiven, all washed away, that we will be with Christ in the everlasting life that all the things that we hope in this world will not matter anymore because we are with Christ. And because our hope always comes from God, God alone, He promises that 200 times in the Bible. One of the readings, the texts that I always like to use for funeral services it is John chapter 14. If you can recall, maybe you remember what is written in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If there were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. Here is Jesus in the upper room, Thursday night, before his crucifixion, before going to the Garden of Gethsemane to be in his spirit, to suffer for our sins. And here is Jesus washing the disciples' feet, preparing Lord's Supper, and at the same time telling them, in my father's house there are many rooms. All that thing happened at the same time. Just try to picture Jesus celebrating Lord's Supper with the disciples. Before that he washed their feet. And now Jesus is at the table with them. They are eating. Jesus is giving the, the body and blood of his body and blood. And then he tells us, my father's house there are many rooms. And if you suffer now or if you miss me, Remember, in the Father's house there are many rooms. This is what is hope. The disciples, even though they would miss the Lord, they would have the hope that one day they will be reunited with Christ in heaven. Because Jesus promised to them, hope comes only by the promises of God. A promise that it's a refuge for us as Christians. This is what we call hope. Hope is the certainty we have. And even when we live in this world, and even when we sin, let me tell you, the devil sometimes wants us to not have hope. When we have sometimes we sin against God or against someone, it seems like hope goes away. 
we feel not worthy of this. And then God comes and tells us that even though I have sinned, I still have forgiveness. And the hope of eternal life continues. It's still mine. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace and hope. I would say, because we have peace with Jesus, we have also hope. The scripture gives a hope in this wonderful, but sometimes forgotten truth. I was reading a book for a, uh, this week about the resurrection and the eternal life, the new heaven and new earth, and I came across this sentence. Scripture gives us hope in this wonderful but sometimes forgotten truth that God never gave up on his original plan for human beings to dwell on earth. In fact, the climax of history will be the creation of a new heaven and a new earth, a resurrected universe inhabited by resurrected people living with the resurrected Jesus. This is the hope we have that one day Christ will come back to judge the living and the dead. He will transform the world we are living in and make into a paradise for all of those who believe in Him. This is hope. This is the hope God is calling us all to have. And I am sure that we will all have in Christ, who died for all of us on the cross to pay for all our sins and make us all worthy of this hope. It is in his name that we pray. Amen.
all the prayers when I was working. We are praying for all those who are in need and all those who want to give thanks to God for all the blessings received. Almighty God, your word is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Bless those who gather to teach and learn your word, especially our Sunday school catechism classes and Bible studies, that we show ourselves wise and faithful sons and daughters who delight in your word and walk in your ways, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of us all in your Son, who was wounded for our transgressions, Deliver the sick from illness, the suffering from their pain, the trouble from their distress, and the dying from fear. This morning we lift before you our brothers and sisters, Linda Heather, Ashley Baker, Bill Bass, Gary Porter, Helen Porter, Emma Douglas, Gina Foster, Tucker Friedmeier, Larry Gish, Joe Green, Karen Haymeyer, Iris Hack, Ruth Higgins, Doreen Kaiser, Joyce Kislin, myself, Amy Leo, Fanny Meisheimer, Brad O'Neill, Susan O'Neill, Michael Brax, Fred Sloop Jr., Brian Sedgwick, David Schubert, Wanda Strobel, Ron Thompson, Brad and Charlotte Friedmeier, and uh, Walker Friedmeier. We also ask the Lord that you give them courage and the strength in our and their afflictions, and their afflictions, that we may trust in your promises and wait your promises of healing according to your gracious will, Lord Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as today we are only online with our door closed, doors closed, we, we implore and you, we ask the Lord that you will protect and bless all of us, that you will uh, deliver us from any uh, COVID-19, that you will be upon each member of this congregation, that you will bless us, O Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon all of us. For the internet, we praise and thank you, Lord, because it is through the, the internet or the radio that today a lot of people can still listen to the service. We thank you, Lord, for those uh, live streams and media and uh, the radio station in town that provides this uh, for us. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we also thank you for um, St. Paul Lutheran Church as this year we celebrate 160 years of blessings. We thank you, Lord, that from the foundation of this congregation to this day you have been blessed all of us so we can continue to spread the good news of Jesus, O oh Lord. Continue to bless all of us so we can uh, continue to uh, share the good news of Jesus Christ to all those in need. Almighty God, you have promised never to abandon the children. Give us such confidence in your gracious will that we not abandon you in times of past. Grow weary when hope is tried, or listen with itching ears to the false voices who would entice us. Helps us always and in all things to hold on to your promises with joy and thanksgiving. In Jesus' wonderful and precious name we ask. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. You all receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon his face unto you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Let's sing the, the last song, Spread the Reign of God the Lord. Thank you. 